Hey guys. So we've uh, we've caught the woods. Take a break on this nice day. It's uh, Sunday the 9th of March. And uh, sun's out, so we thought we'd come up for an hour or so. And uh, I've got a couple of things to show you. And um, I'm going to show Emily some things. I have to set up a, a basher and what have you. Uh, and then we're going to have a, have a bit of a coffee. <coughs> Excuse me. So, first things first, hopefully you'll be able to see it. My wool top, you'll notice it's not grey anymore. It's not, it's not that colour anymore, it's now green. I, um, I managed to get myself um, some, a couple of green, I think they were Yug Yugoslavian um, wool blankets, so I've redone it, made a few alterations to it, I took that kangaroo pouch that was on here and just made a, a hand warmer pocket on it now um, and added, added some rings on the inside to attach things to. Um, I've made the arms used to come down like here, so I've, I've made them a bit tighter to go, so this will go under um, the canvas jacket that I've got, which I'm just going to get out of my bag now and show you. Right, so here it is. It's not actually canvas, I made a mistake. I do apologise about the aeroplane. I'll just move this camera up a little bit. Not so you can see the aeroplane, so you can see me a bit better. Here's my... It's a, it's a cotton. It's a cotton top. Um, it used to be a Norwegian snow smock and it came in a whitish colour and uh, I've dyed it brown, added some wool cuffs to it, changed the buttons on it and, um, and added a paracord thingy. So uh, oh, I've done a a waist, a waist cord cinched in and I've just put a couple of bits of leather where the paracord comes through. So I'll just pop this on and I'll show you so you can see what it looks like. That's it. So, there we go. I've now got my smock on, on top of my, um, my wool jacket. Bring this camera down a bit more so you can see a bit better. There we go. Two nice big pockets here. So put in whatever in. Just shut up. Kids, who needs them? So not quite finished, it needs um, needs some sort of waterproof covering on it, but uh, I think it'll serve quite well during the winter. Oh, as you can see, it's got a nice big hood on it. So everything gets buttoned up. And then do, the, do up the draw cords. You know, you've only got that. We've only got that little bit of space that's exposed to the elements. Uh, right, next, uh, next new uh, new purchase. Um, if I, can't, I don't know whether you'll remember me. I've got my tenth wonder hammer, um, and it was like a. Um, it was two-tone. It was like a kind of a turquoisey green 
and then a bit, I think it was a bit, a bit of dark green or maybe a darker turquoise green. Well now, I've got another Tense Wonder, but this is the XL, or is it the Super XL? I forget now which it was. Well, the hammock itself, not when it's, let me just move out here so you can see it a bit more, see it a bit better. You see how it, uh, like how I have it, I've got it on a ridge line. I have mine on a ridge line, so it's, it's like a banana shape. Well, if you hang it normally, um, straight, it's three meters long by 1.8, and you get the extra width on it. Let me see if I can do this and get to show you. The extra width comes from the extra bit of material there that's sewn onto it. Now, some of the I've already, I've already started modifying it, obviously. Um, I've got normal webbing there for if um, I can't get any whoopee slings in between trees. I've done that to both ends. I've got a simple small little carabiner there for um, my under blanket, part of my under blanket to clip, clip onto. Yeah, and then here I've sewn on a bit of material with a bit of an elastic, elastic in just to pull this kind of the sides tight for when I'm lining it. It's exactly the same as um, the other Tenth Wonder Hammock, just it's all in green, that's all. So um, I just thought I'd quickly show you that. I'll show you that properly um, next time we're, we're up, uh, we're up at, at camp camping out. But, uh, right, I'm going to get the child occupied now and do a bit with her, so I'll catch you in a little bit. Right guys, I've shown Emily how to set up a tarp or a basher, just a simple like tent configuration. Now she's going to have a go at doing it on her own and see how she does. So, see how she goes. Good girl. Uh, right, so she's got the she's got the ridge up. I didn't take the bungees off the trees because it would be a bit, a bit too hard for her, I think. But she's got the basic idea. So who knows guys? Five five or six years time you might see her on YouTube. Yeah, that okay. Keep going. I didn't know if I got it right. And then on the ground she got um, one of those US um, space blanket survival blanket things. I'll show you that in, in a few minutes. Okay, well, can you do do the back ones? Okay, and then check. And then you can check. Okay. Give her a quiz in a minute and see if she can remember what the um, what three things you need for a um, for fire. So basically, the fire triangle. Yeah. Done it. Well done. Good girl. Did I do it first? Right. Well, thumbs up from me. Right, here we go. Here's a question. Tell tell everybody on YouTube what three things you need for a fire. Oxygen. Oxygen, well done. Hmm? Uh, it's just if 
Source of ignition and what else do you need? Uh, I've got oxygen. Oxygen and source of ignition. Mm. And what does Daddy put in his car? Fuel. Fuel, that's it, well done. She got there in the end. So I'll just uh, take you off the tripod guys and I'll just show you what she's done. Fuel. So It's a simple, simple tent style. It'd be enough to keep the the, the, the rain yeah. off her. Obviously, she could put more pegs in. Um, you know, but for a, a first attempt, I think she's done well. So, like, she could add. You could add another tent peg here. No. And uh, you know, and I'll alter it all around. But yeah, I'm pleased with it. She's done well for a first time. Eight year old, soon to be nine year old. So yeah, I'm happy with that. And the basher is from um, SASS is the company name. I think they're based, they're, or they used to be based in um, Lancashire I'm here. or Lancaster, Lancaster in Lancashire, I'm here. if that's if that's right. And I don't, I'm not sure if the company's still still going or not. But that is what they called their um, Aussie Hoochie Basher, and I think I think now it's about the same size as as what um, the British Army Basher is. But obviously it's got a few. Yeah, never mind. But it's got a few extra features to it. Um, you've got the D rings on each corner. You've got eyelets as well on each each corner, as well as these big webbing webbing loops. Um, and as always, you've got your central pull up bit. But anyway. For a first go, I'm happy with that. So anyway, we're going to get that packed up, and um, I think we might have uh, a, a cup of coffee. I think. I'm so happy with it. We'll see you in a bit. I'm happy with it. Right, good. just while I'm packing up, this is that um, US survival blanket that I was telling you about. It's green on the outside. Silver are reflective on the inside. So, big enough to, to wrap it around you. And you could, at a pinch, make um, a bit of a shelter out of it. So, I mean it, Daddy. Yeah. I've also got another one of these. Um, it's actually got a, a hood on it. I know it doesn't doesn't fold down as small as one of you as one as the, of the you know the little silver emergency blankets, but from the feel of it, you know you can you can tell this is a good hard wearing. You're too really. Okay. And kind of, you know, pocket size, more or less. Ah. I mean, you probably could. Oh. Fold it down a bit more, and it might just go in a cargo pocket. Right, just going to get a brew going. We're going to share it. Only because you've got a bigger the mug than me. Um. 
and the stove of choice is the jet boil flash as always okay my handy water bottles daddy i've only got a bit left yeah in my handy one i only bought one Emily's got the folding mug from Wilco's mm -hmm. for one ninety nine, mm -hmm. and she's brought her collapsible water bottle. It's still got some left in it. Yeah. <sighs> Daddy, I made it back five. Yeah. <laughs> it's standing on the camera. <laughs> I said it's a space person because it's got a helmet. <sighs> hey, you got more than me. I was. Boom! Yeah, alright. Now I'm sure there's an old saying somewhere that says daddies always get more. Law. But it's not fair. It's not a fair <laughs> law. Alright. Thank you. Alright. Did you bring any cream? No, I didn't bring no cream. Did you do that massive one that I had at Matlock? No. Aww. Did you bring any marshmallows? No. <sighs> Well, what did you bring to go with it? I didn't bring anything. <gasps> you should know hey, that I hey, like hey, to Get your laces done off, okay. please. Before you trip. Now I'm going back in the hammock. I'm oh, just waiting for that to boil up. I'm getting back in the hammock. Oh, nice catching a bit. How I actually got in. All right. Nice whisper hot chocolate. So it burnt my tongue. Cheers, guys. And uh, gonna have these, and then uh, I'm gonna head off, head off home. So until next time, have fun and stay safe. <laughs>